Liz and the Baker That Sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you are a subscriber. As always, it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey. So welcome back to my channel. Today's video is my Sew Heavy Jane unboxing video. I've got my box here. Um, it's a really beautiful fabric this month. I have opened it, so I've got a list of patterns that will work really well with this month's fabric. I've got a couple of the patterns to share with you today and a couple of them I'll just put in line drawings so you can see what they look like. And as always, I'll link everything down below. I'll also pop a link to where you can get 10% off your first box if you're tempted to subscribe to the Sew Heli Jane boxes. There are three different subscriptions. You can get a mini box, a classic box, or a luxury box. I subscribe to the classic box, which is £35 a month. Um, and within that, you get two and a half metres of fabric. You get some fat quarters, a magazine. You usually get a little treat, haberdashery item, and some thread, um, as well as fabric. I don't know if I said that. Um, in the mini box, you get a metre of fabric, some fat quarters, and all the other bits and bobs. And in the luxury box, you get more fabric, so you get three and a half metres, and then you also get a pattern, as well as all the other bits and bobs that I've mentioned. Um, so I'll link that down below, and there's a code that you need to use if you want to get 10% off your first box. So I get the classic box, which means I get two and a half metres of fabric. It's a little bit dishevelled my box this month because I've already had a look at the fabric and shared it in another video that I filmed today. Um, so you've got a little sneak peek of the fabric there. But I always start with the magazine. So it's issue 42 and it's called The Darling Buds of May. Um, so this is the May box 2022. Hayley always starts with a little hello and that usually gives us an idea of where the theme has come from. So it says, hello, I'm so excited for this month's box. I've had the theme in my mind for nearly a year and I'm so happy to finally see it come to life. One of my all time favorite TV programs was The Darling Buds of May, a short comedy drama on ITV made in the early nineties and set in the fifties in rural England. It's such sweet and happy viewing and anytime I'm feeling down or unwell, it doesn't fail to make me smile. So with the theme in mind, I decided to go for a nod to the fifties, one of my favorite decades for fashion and style with the full skirt and fitted bodice not to mention the fun prints. For the luxury box this month, there's a gorgeous cotton poplin from the Simply Springy collection by Rooted. It's a beautiful crisp white cotton with a green wavy leaf print running through the width of the fabric. And it's been paired with the Pauline Alice cami dress pattern. I'll put an image in of what that pattern looks like now. A sweet shirt dress that gives that 50 shape in a subtle way. The classic and mini boxes this month have an incredible cotton poplin with either a strawberry or a cherry print on a dark navy background. As soon as I saw it, I knew it was perfect and just check out what the girls have been making with their fabrics on page eight. I'm really excited to see what they've been making. And then we've got some berry patch fat quarters from Craft Cotton Company. Um, and then we've also got Victoria from Little Rosy Cheeks, who's designed an exclusive iron on patch with so perfect and the perfect nod to the show. So we've got an interview with the fold line, which is all about the sewing weekender. I'm not going to the virtual sewing weekender when it's on this year because I'm away. Um, but I have joined it virtually in the past. I'm tempted to sign up because I know that you can access the videos even if you can't sort of participate in the weekend. Um, but the sewing weekender is back for 2022 and this year it's bigger than ever. Um, it's in its seventh year, which is amazing. And it's online again this year. So there's an interview there. I'll pop a link down below so you can find out a bit more about the Sewing Weekender if you um, are unsure what it is. Um, and then Make of the Month is this beautiful Tilly in the Buttons indigo dress, which is by Sally French Seams in the cotton poplin, which was the blue and yellow. It's really beautiful. Um, so there's a sort of interview with Make of the Month, which I'm looking forward to reading. Three boxes, three makes. So Esther received the classic box and she's used it to make the Sew Over It Giselle dress which is a beautiful, quite close fitting dress. And it works really nicely um, with that cotton poplin. Then we've got Gemma who got the mini box and she's paired it with a plain cotton poplin to create a stitch witch patterned Tudor blouse, which is a pattern I'm not aware of, but it's got really gorgeous voluminous sleeves. Um, so Gemma looks great in her top. It goes really nicely with that dark poplin that she's paired it with as well. It really makes that print really pop. And then we've got Laura, who had the luxury box. So you can see that beautiful fabric, really gorgeous. And then Laura decided to use the rooted cotton poplin to make a Megan Nielsen Matilda dress, which is a really lovely dress. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Um, so she looks really lovely in her make, absolutely gorgeous. It's always really inspiring to see what they use it for. 
And then the Fat Quarter Project, I say this with every Fat Quarter Project, but I do really love this one from Tamlin and it is something that I do need to get a wriggle on and have a go at doing because my oven gloves are falling apart because I use them so often. Um, but it's an oven mitt Fat Quarter Project, um, which I think is a great one. And actually that would be a really great gift as well. Um, so I'm looking forward to following those instructions. Maybe that's a summer project when I've got a little bit more time. And then there was just some information about the big sew-off, which has just happened recently. Um, and then Haley's Little Links, lots and lots of different things there. Um, so there's a book by Colleen Hoover, which is called Confess. The Quick Unpick with Gabadashery. If you haven't seen any of Gabadashery's Quick Unpick, she does them every Sunday over on Instagram, but then she shares them on her YouTube channel where she has a chat with loads of different amazing people. And she interviewed Hayley, and um, so that's over on YouTube. Do go and check them out. They're really enjoyable to watch. There's something on Apple TV called Severance, and then there's a movie where the crawdads sing. That's tricky for me to say. Uh, then we've got Profile Joanne, who is a So Heady Jane subscriber, and she is Hello Jo Sews um, over on Instagram. She made some beautiful makes there, so I'm looking forward to reading that interview. Then we've got an interview with Pauline Alice, um, whose pattern went into the luxury box this month. Uh, pattern picks from the fold line. So they've picked the Remy Raglan top, which is a So How 7 pattern. They've picked the number nine Ron Top by How To Do Fashion. I absolutely love this. It's got these gorgeous um, sort of ruffles on the shoulder and then this amazing peplum on the bottom. I love the shape of that. It's not a pattern company I'm aware of. And then the Sorrel Dress by Jennifer Lauren Handmade, which is a beautiful dress pattern. And then we have got the Makers Gallery with loads of beautiful makes. I love this skirt. Um, and then this blouse up here, which is Helena Button's Matilde blouse. Uh, then we've got a skirt, which is the Simple Sew so Chelsea skirt. And then we've got a number 19 gold leaves pattern from the Otterborough Design Kids magazine, which is super cute. This quilt is absolutely amazing. And this is by Bonnie, who's used the Fat Quarters for March's Spring Has Sprung box to make a quilt using the five inch Accu Quilt Square. I think that's fabulous. And then yeah, this skirt, what pattern did they use? Um, the Emmeline skirt from Sew Over It using the pink and gray cotton poplin. Beautiful, and it goes beautifully with that pearl cardigan as well. And then we always get some information about what's in the box, which is at the back. And then just a space for us to jot down any notes if we want to. So in the classic box, there's two and a half meters of cotton poplin, four berry patch fat quarters, Little Rosy Cheeks So Perfect Iron-On Patch, um, Gutterman Thread, two metres of blue polka dot ribbon, the magazine, and then there's some ever so English breakfast tea. I love tea, so I'm looking forward to having that. So I'll share the fat quarters with you first. So we've got this that's got like blueberries all over it. And then we've got this one that's got berries and cherries. This one is a green print. It's got a little subtle stripe. And then this one is like a vintage -y type one. It's really lovely. Um, I really, really love the design on this one. So that's what that one looks like. And then, whoops, we've got some ribbon, which is blue with red polka dots all over it. I've got a navy Gutterman thread. And then this is the cute little tea. So it's Joe's Tea Company, ever so English breakfast tea, organic, plastic free. And in there, there's a little tea bag there mm, I do love the smell of tea and then we've got these um, iron-on patches which say so perfect and I think they're really cute they go really nicely on like dungarees and things so before we get onto the fabric I've realized I've not told you what I'm wearing but this is quite an old make it's a deer and doe myosotis with uh, the mandarin collar then you've got the buttons going down here um, and then just short sleeves. Um, it's got a gathered skirt and a ruffle on the bottom. This is in a viscose fabric that I got from Simi Sunshine. I'll put pictures of me wearing it, but I'll stand up so you can see. I love the shape of the myosotis. It's so floaty in a viscose. And then I've got, if you can see, the ruffle on the bottom. And I always do the longer length skirt and then add the ruffle on the bottom. Um, it's really lovely and nice and swishy. So sorry, I didn't tell you what I was wearing. So onto the fabric and here it is. It's a cotton poplin, I've got two and a half meters of it. It's on a dark navy background and it's got these really bright strawberries all over it. I'm just opening the fabric up so you can see. 
quite a wide fabric um but yeah it's got these strawberries all over it with the leaf print all over it too it's on quite a dark navy background but that really makes those strawberries pop and you've got the strawberries that are whole and then the strawberries that have been cut it looks like they've been cut in half um so it's a really beautiful fabric it's a cotton poplin so there's not a massive amount of drape to it but it does feel quite lightweight so in terms of patterns that i was thinking of there are, I'm just going to list a few patterns that I know will work really nicely and then I'm going to tell you what patterns I've narrowed it down to for me. So I thought the Saguaro set by Friday Pattern Company would work beautifully with the cotton poplin. I think that would make a really fun set with the cropped top and then the trousers. Um, the Tilly and the Buttons indigo dress I think would work really nicely, especially if you did the add-on pack that had the ruffle on the bottom and the button down back. I think that would look really cute. The um, Anna Allen Anthea dress or just the blouse pattern I think would work really nicely in this cotton poplin. Um, the sagebrush top um, by Friday Pattern Company would work really nicely. Um, you could also sew up like a gathered skirt using this fabric. I think that would work really nicely and there's a couple of patterns that you could use. The free pattern by the Little Pomegranate, the Sabina skirt would work really nicely with this. Um, and then also the Deer and Doe Myosotis. I've sewn up quite a few Deer and Doe Myosotis dresses using a cotton poplin. So I think that would work really nicely in that fabric as well. I'm thinking of using a new pattern that's just been released by Jennifer Lauren Handmade and it's the Isla wrap dress. Um, and I've got the pattern here. So this is what the pattern looks like. It's got this drawstring sort of, I think they're ties actually by looking at the construction of the back because it's a wrap dress that wraps at the back, which is a really interesting construction. You've got a button at the top here to fasten it, but then you've got ties that come round to the front and tie into a little belt. I think it's really beautiful. Um, in terms of fabric recommendations, they recommend a wide range of lightweight woven fabrics with some drape. Um, so you can choose any of your favourite fabrics from cotton lawn, voile and poplin to linen, light chambray or denim, as well as double gauze, sateen and seersucker. Rayon silks, crepes and other slinky fabrics suit Isla perfectly as well, um, but do be mindful of the weight of the back neckline closure because you don't want it to sag. And then there are some more line drawings. Um, this comes in two different size bandings. So you've got sizes 6 to 24, which is A to D cups, or you've got the curved size, which is sizes 16 to 34, C to F cups. Um, so the smallest size is a size 6, which is a high bust of 29 and 1 8 of an inch measurement. The A cup measurement is 29 and a half inches, B cup 30 and a quarter inch, C cup 31 and 1 8 of an inch, and D cup 32 and 1 8 of an inch. And then a waist measurement for a 6 is 24 and 1 quarter inch, and a hip measurement of 35 and 1 quarter inch. And then for a 34, so 56 and 3 quarter inch high bust measurement, a C cup 58 and 5 8 of an inch, a D cup 59 and 5 8 of an inch, E cup 60 and 5 8 of an inch, F cup. 61 and 5 eighths of an inch and then a waist measurement for a 34 is 51 and 3 quarter inches and a hip measurement of 62 and 3 quarters so i think that would work really nicely that cotton poplin would work really nicely for the isla wrap dress i think it'd be quite a stable fabric for sewing that pattern up first and then i also thought maybe the deer and joe myosotis because i absolutely love this pattern it's nice and loose fitting really breezy for the summer as well and i thought that would make a really fun um, Dear and Joe Myosotis. As I mentioned, I was also thinking the Friday Pattern Company Saguaro set, just because I absolutely love this pattern at the moment. I've made three versions, um, and just I think it's a really fun pattern. And I think the top would go with a plain bottoms, and the bottoms would go with a plain t-shirt as well. And I just think in that print, I think it would be a really fun um, summer set. And then the other pattern that I was thinking of was a pattern that I've just bought from Sewers Faction because they had a massive pattern sale on. It's a deer and doe pattern and it's the orchidy dress. And I think maybe this would work really nicely in a cotton poplin as well. In terms of fabric recommendations for this pattern, um, they recommend Batiste, cotton voile, Swiss dots and eyelet fabric. So I think it's, so I think it's actually recommended for um, like a lightweight fabric. So this isn't a medium weight, but it's not a drapey fabric. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of research with this um, pattern. I'll go and have a look over on Instagram and see if anyone's actually made it out of a poplin to see if the fabric would work. Um, but in terms of testing out this pattern, I think a poplin is always quite a safe, stable fabric to use when you're first trying a pattern. 
Um, it's a line dress and blouse with deep V-neck bridal buttons. So it's a line dress and blouse with a deep V-neck. It's got bridal buttons and statement sleeves. Version A is a midi dress with a zipper closure and version B is a short blouse with a ruffled bottom. So I think if I had enough fabric, I would sew up the dress version. And again, I think it would look really nice in that poplin. I think the poplin would really suit that um, sort of slight puff sleeve. I think it'd work really nicely for the skirt and also because it comes in at that waistband, I think it would work really nicely as well. So that's also a contender. My pattern, because it's a paper pattern, comes in sizes 34 to 46. So for a 34, it's a 31 and a half inch bust measurement, 23 and a half inch waist measurement, and 33 and three quarter inch hip measurement. And then for a 46, it's a 41 inch bust, 33 inch waist, and 43 and a quarter inch hip measurement. So far, I'm more tempted by the Isla dress or the Saware set. Um, I'm not quite sure which one yet. I'm going to pre-wash the fabric and then have a little look on the hashtag for, well, I've seen so many gorgeous sets of these. Um, but I'm going to go and check out the hashtag for this one and then go and have a look at some of the versions of the Isla wrap dress that have been sewn up. Um, but yeah, I really love this fabric. I think it's a little bit different. Um, it's quite fun. And actually, it's a fabric that would work really well for the So Fruity 22 challenge that Blossom Sandwich is running through the month of June over on Instagram. Um, this could be a contender if I get it sewn up. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing what came in this month's So Hayley Jane box. If you have got any thoughts on what I should use this fabric for, um, especially thinking about those patterns that I'm leaning towards, please do let me know in the comments below. It's always interesting to get your thoughts. Um, if you've got this fabric, let me know what you're going to turn it into. Um, and if you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, it'd be really great if you could hit that subscribe button. You'll get notified of when I bring out my next video. Thank you, as always, for watching. Take care, and I'll be back soon with another video. Bye.